Joseph is my childhood friend. We hail from a lovely town called Kolar Gold Fields, KGF in Karnataka. We speak all languages there. A bit of smattering of Malayalam as well. We were a, we still are a group of fun-loving, very friendly, die-hard friends, yet highly competitive. We were. Most of us got placed into engineering, law, and medical fields. In 1993, in the final year of his engineering, Joseph was suddenly diagnosed with chronic kidney failure, a condition which both the kidneys are failed. I mean, both the kidneys are really bad word to say, I'm a wrong word to say. When kidney failure happens, it's always both the kidneys. So Joseph was hooked on to dialysis. And since the last 24 years, Joseph has learned to live with dialysis. A procedure where he has to undergo dialysis four hours each time, three to four times a week. So Joseph lives every day, his today, knowing that he has to come back to hospital for dialysis tomorrow. A wonderful sportsman, footballer, musician, guitarist, artist, painter, and a lovely human being with dreams suddenly found that all his dreams came crashing to the ground. Over the last 24 years, he has doing, been doing the best that he can with a smile. He can barely walk because of the longevity of his dialysis. His bones are fragile, a glass. He has knees, have arthritis, and he can walk with difficulty, though he does keep up with us. He even danced a jig at the recent uh, Friends reunion. He has arthritis of the small joints of his fingers. He can barely hold a pen or even button his shirt. Yet, the master painter was able to sketch this of me and my son. That is victory. That is confidence. That is stepping over all the obstacles in life to still be yourself and be happy. With all these things yet, Joseph is lucky. He is still alive. Because most people on dialysis do not even survive, not even half, not even a quarter of that long. Because most people who start dialysis in our country or anywhere in the world do well but the survivals aren't very good. Chronic kidney disease or failure is a debilitating, progressive, and a irreversible damage of both the kidneys. So as the kidneys keep getting damaged from 100% on, they keep coming down, they keep working less than 90%, less than, I mean, more than 90% is damaged, less than 10% is working. The toxins are built up too much, the excess fluids are built up too much, and they have to be started on dialysis. Dialysis keeps them alive because not dialyzing, they die very quickly within hours to days to a few weeks. So dialysis keeps them alive, but only just because dialysis has its own problems. Dialyzing, first of all, four times, four hours each time, three to four times a week, keeps them away from everything. They can't find a job, they can't attend college, many of them can't even get married, and then yet they have debilitating chronic medical conditions. A 35-year-old young person on dialysis has the chance of dying 1,000 times more than someone of his own same age who is healthy. He has the chance of dying as that of an 80-year-old person. And that's what dialysis does. It keeps him alive, but it is life-saving, but not life-giving. Because by three to four years of dialysis, if 100 people start dialysis today, 50% are dead and by around 5 to 6 years of dialysis less than 10 or 20% are living. And in our country where a lot of corners are cut, people compromise on too many things, who dialyze only twice a week, the survivals are not great at all. So what is the answer for these people? How do they get away from their diseases? How do they get better? It is organ transplantation. It's just not about the kidneys. The liver fails, the heart fails, the lungs fail, the kidneys fail a new organ put in, gives them a fresh new lease of life. They do extremely well. They are off all the machines. They can live, laugh, love, learn, play, get married. And young girls can have even delivered healthy babies after kidney transplantation or several other transplantations. So that's what transplant does. It gives a wonderful new lease of life. Then why don't we go on transplanting everybody? Why should we even put them on dialysis? 
because of it the burden transplant can do something it can make people even do this it can make them play football ivan klasnic 2000 euro cup he played football for his country a croatian scored three goals in the whole tournament no a transplanted patient playing on the highest levels of football in the world that is great and a face you all know very well he had a liver transplant and one year later was proudly holding the first ipad to the whole world announcing it so with transplants you achieve so many things and it's not about achieving it's about surviving too 100 people start dialysis and have a transplant today by the end of say 6 to 10 years more than 80 or 90 are alive so these people need transplants so how do we go about transplanting first let us estimate the burden in our country in india we have at least 100000 people on dialysis at the moment we the nephrologists we know how much of kidney failure is prevalent in the population so for a 1.3 billion population that we have we would have expected at least 1 to 2 million people on dialysis yet there are only 100000 people who are on dialysis why because they might have gone to their friendly quack in the neighborhood for treatment they might have gone to spiritual healing by their local higher religious centers and tied amulets around their hands to ward off all evil or they just don't have the finances or the logistics to come to hospitals from remote village or from the slums or they just misguided and so most of them don't even reach hospitals to start dialysis they die so even if 100000 people start on dialysis you would estimate that we would need at least 50 to 70000 transplants barring the very sick people who can't get a transplant everyone else would be transplanted so around 50 70000 transplants in our country and we hardly do 5000 kidney transplants in our country and this is no great anywhere else either even in the mecca of healthcare the united states they need 120,000 transplants per year and they hardly do 20 to 30,000 transplants why is this why can't transplant everybody there are the first way of getting an organ if someone's organ fails is their loved ones their family step forward to donate so it's living donation in living donation it's fantastic the matching's good everything is good and you can do it easily but the problem is that living donors are limited so the life is limited they may be diabetic they may have other medical conditions they may be just too old to be donating or the domestic problems the in-laws don't accept their daughter donating to the brother so there are kind of problems so we nephrologists have been pushing the boundaries accepting slightly elder donors slightly fragile donors even doing opposite or abo incompatible kidney transplants giving an a donor to a b kidney and so on and uh, trying to jump in spite of that we've been doing 5000 transplants So if it's not living what can we do it's time for the dead to stand up and be counted disease donor transplants or cadaver transplants that is when someone dies of an accident has a brain stem injury or a brain stem death that's the time for these people to be donating i mean they're not the ones who are donating now because they they're legally dead the family the kitten can come forward and agree or consent to donate their organs so the re- usual scenarios there's a young man on a bike has a crash and then he has a brain stem failure is brought to hospital the coordinators and myself we all sit with them the whole night and then counsel them saying that look his brain dead is not going to live his heart is going to stop in the next 24 hours can you do the miracle be the miracle the gift of life and then when they consent the organs are harvested and they are given and that is the most beautiful thing for the because giving the gift the gift of life when we die our souls go to heaven our organs don't our souls go to heaven or some place nice i'm sure i mean mine would go to goa if it's given a choice but my organs won't be going to heaven they will be deleted and th- can they will be either cremated or buried according to the religion then so this is the time to stand up and make the choice to say yes i do i want to donate i do want to donate life is such a beautiful thing because it can be shared even after death and it can be shared between many people after after dying and to be a hero after death is far more easier one light before going out can light up 8 to 10 more lives and then be gone we all know that we're going to die someday 
So this is the time to make a choice. And knowing that we're going to die someday, that we are mortal, is the time when gives us the power to choose far ahead in advance. Yes, I do donate my organs to someone like that little girl that you just saw, who's waiting just for an organ to live a normal life. And the crux of this, all this thing is knowing that we're going to die is fine. Donating our organs is perfectly fine. One donor life to eight to ten patients or recipients with all the organs being distributed. So look at what a hero somebody can be. But the problem is this. When I die, my organs can be donated. It's downright easy. I'm dead anyway. But the problem is the relatives, the beloved ones. In that grief-stricken moment through teary eyes, those emotional relatives may not be amenable to donating their kith or kin's organs, even though he has registered or wanted to donate in his life. And the kith and kin have the power to refuse or to say yes. So we spend hours together sitting with these relatives and trying to explain to them, look, be the miracle, the gift of life. That relative could be one of us here. And losing a beloved one, it's not easy. It's a very emotional time. It's a grief-stricken moment. But yet, through those tear-filled eyes, that's the time to stand up, to look up and say, yes, I do. And believe me, many people said, yes, I do, on a particular fateful day on the wedding days. And they live to regret it. But here, when you say, yes, do, that will be the happiest moment either for you or you as a relative donating your loved one's organs so that you can help save 8 to 10 more lives. What are you going to do with the organs anyway? You're not going to take them to heaven. You're not. You won't even be uh, cleared past the first security gate. You can't even take a water bottle into the airports. You can't take your organs to heaven. Saint Peter is going to stop you right in the first security gate. Better donate them. Because when you meet your Maker finally, when you go up there, you can stand proudly before Him and say, "Yes, I did. 